Good morning. Hello. What's up? Good it's, afternoon. It's been a while. Good evening. Good evening, wherever you are, wherever you are whatever watching this from, whatever time of the day it is. We are so excited to be back in the Word of God with you. Now, those of you that rock with us on social media platforms, you know that we go live twice a week with Devo and Bible study. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Every Tuesday and Thursday morning. Uh, and so we are excited about being in the Word with you there. So those of you that want to connect with us more regularly and interact, our, live, uh, our lives on our social media platform is the way to go. Uh, and get our app. You want to get our app. We Make sure that app. you get our app so that, that you can download it. Huh? You heard that note? I, I, I sang it. I heard the note. I heard that note. Praise, praise God. Um, get the app. App is going to be important. Ecos Church. Ecos Church. On that app. Um, and you can get it in the Apple App Store or Google App Store, Android App Store. Um, also, um, we will be on Roku TV and Apple TV as well. Our content will be there as well. So a lot of great things are happening. We are so glad and excited that you've been rocking with us. Mm -hmm. The last uh, highlighted message that we released was Dr. Jaquette, and I hope oh, that blessed God. your life. And we let it simmer. Yes, we yes, did. We you did. know why? Because you need to learn how to wait on the Lord. Oh, it was so good. And so do we. Yes, for sure. Just salute to Dr. J. Are you ready for the word today? Come on and give me the word. Let's go. We're going to be in the book of Acts, mm -hmm. the third chapter. Before we do, there's a song that I just want to... I want to sing it's an old worship song that I, I we actually used to sing it in college and I haven't sung it in so long but um, it's to go over the mountains and the sea <laughs> your river runs with love for me and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my voice, for I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. 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 We 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 could sing of your love forever. Lord, we thank you for your love, for your presence, for your voice in our midst right now. We say yes, 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 yes to you shaping and you molding what you're doing in us, what you're doing through us, what you're doing for us. Holy Spirit, we bless you today. We honor you today. We thank you for being in the triumphant church, the glorious church. Thank you for quickening us. We can only do it by your power. And we echo even the, the sentiments from last week's experience. Help us want it. Help is always wanted. We love you, Jesus, with all of our hearts. Minister to your people today. Your word is spirit and life. We pray that, that light will come into hearts and life will come into homes. For your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. Last time, I could sing of your love forever. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, guys, let's get to Acts, the third chapter. Acts, the third chapter today, we are going to walk through the scripture to get today like a family. And for those of you that are heads of households or those of you that got kids, we try not to make these too um, laborious, kind of easy for you to share with your kids as well. We want you to be equipped to, um, to lead your home well. 
And so we know that yeah. that takes more than just what happens in the four walls on the weekend. And if you're not plugged into a local four wall experience and Ecos is your home church, then let's get in this word together. Are you ready for the word? Give me the word. Let's go. Acts 3. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who enter the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand, the right hand, and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked, and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. Ooh, what a good, good hmm. passage of scripture. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, uh, we've been talking about, obviously, the power of the Holy Spirit. Last week's experience, help wanted, continuing on in the power of the Holy Spirit through the church and believers in their everyday lives. Now, you will note that most of the miracles that you see mm -hmm. in the scripture are not happening in a church service. Yeah. Most of the miracles that you see that are happening are happening actually as people are living their lives with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They are walking, talking, breathing everyday life, but with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, a whole nother realm of possibility becomes available to the everyday believer. This is why it's so important that we as people who are kind of, I would say churchy, who have been in church for a long time, that we don't superimpose on other people our experience of the Holy Spirit as, as what their experience with the Holy Spirit needs to be. Or that we don't just say that the Holy Spirit works only in the context of the fall wall experience. Because most of the precedent of the breakout moments we see in scripture that are miraculous are happening where the need is, not where the church people meet. Okay, And so it's very important for us to note that, that the Holy Spirit is at work beyond even this moment. So this moment that we're having right now, you in your homes, you in your car, you in your beach, you in your office, wherever you are, and you're hearing this word, you're part of this moment, you should be feeling infused with the rich word of God, infused by the presence of God. You should be feeling uh, quickened in your heart as you hear the word. You should become enlightened in your spirit as the spirit of revelation and, and wisdom is revealing God's word to you, but it must go beyond this point. Right. If it doesn't go beyond this point, that we are not carrying the good news mm -hmm. out to those who really need it. We're just keeping it for ourselves. Right. All right. So in this passage of scripture, we see that the guys are at this gate. Now, uh, the Jews observe three times of prayer, nine in the morning, uh, 3 p.m., and then again right around sunset. Okay. This is, is, is noted to be around 3 p.m. in the middle of the day, and they are at... Uh, the gate called Beautiful is not the gateway to the city. It's the gateway to the temple. That's so true. worshipers were going in to worship and giving to the poor was considered praiseworthy and uh, kind and generous and godly. Mm -hmm. So naturally, the people who needed set up. <laughs> people that needed some coins said, let's get to the place let's where the people gonna give me are going to be generous. Mm -hmm. I'm so not knocking it. Daily asking. He had a daily need, so he took a daily <laughs> offering, okay? He said he didn't have nowhere else to go also because he was lame. So that was his only This they is said, where we I'm at. dropping you off here, we're picking you up here. Call us when you get the money for the surgery. Mm -hmm. Like they <laughs> they were like, raise these funds mm -hmm. and uh and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. but, but here we see some key things that are worth highlighting. Let's go to verse uh verse three. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. 
and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave him them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. I like that. Mm -hmm. They fixed their eyes on him. He, he fixed their eyes, his eyes on them. Because Peter says, look at us. Mm -hmm. He it? wanted to interrupt his moment. Mm -hmm. He wanted to, to disrupt this moment. Bishop Jakes has a new book out called Disruptive Thinking. He wanted to interrupt what the man thought he needed and what the man was asking for and the usual rhythm. I hold my hand out. I'm lame. I'm not really trying to not be I lame. I ask for money. You give me money. Keep it moving. Peter said, this is an inferior cycle. You know what I find interesting is that he's laying there with a certain expectation of this is all my life is. Mm. This is all I'm going to get. This is I'm not thinking about anything. I'm not asking for. I'm at the temple. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking for the work. Mm -hmm. I'm asking for coins. money. I'm mm -hmm. asking for money. Mm -hmm. I don't have any expectation beyond this. Mm -hmm. I'm not even asking for healing at this right. point. Like I'm settled into this life. Mm -hmm. How many times have we settled with what we have mm -hmm. and not looked beyond this moment or our situation to think that there should, could be something better than this mm -hmm. that I could ask for, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to ask for it because I it's I know this mm -hmm. I know this situation I'm comfortable here mm -hmm. I'm settled here I can I know how to navigate this mm -hmm. I don't know what that is mm -hmm. I don't even know that I can ask for anything more. The Holy so I'm stay here. Absolutely. And what we see here in a practical way, it's not like a in like a sky cracks and he's raptured in like this um individualized sovereign moment. But the Holy Spirit through Peter is disrupting his paradigm. He's given him a context to dream and expect for something more. Mm -hmm. What else do you want? You're asking for money, but is that even what you need? Mm -hmm. Like, you're lame. Yeah. And you, yes, you need money, but you need money because you're lame and can't work a regular job. But if we got rid of the, the lame, mm -hmm. then you can you work, can work you can and you won't need money because realistically, even when I give you money, it's still not solving the real issue. And then what are you going to do with this money? He could probably you, take care of his expenses eat, or eat and... What Try is your to live. Of life? What is your quality of life? And I wonder how the money is just going to help him cope with an inferior quality of life. Mm -hmm. And I that? wonder what are we asking for that really is not what we need. It's mm -hmm. actually just going to help us cope with an inferior quality of life. Mm -hmm. I wonder what have we been settling for even in our prayer requests? Yeah. What what inferior prayer request? What what low Hanging, what low hanging fruit do we keep reaching for and never thinking about the more mm -hmm. because this is what we've become accustomed to? Yeah. And Peter's there and he says, look at me. But not before he looked at him. The scripture says, and they fixed it, their eyes on him. And he's saying to him, look at us. And he mm -hmm. fixed his eyes on, on Peter. Peter and, and John, they looked at him and then he said, look at, look at us. Because I'm getting ready to cause an exchange to happen in real community. Is it, you ever look somebody in their eyes? It's kind of vulnerable. Yeah, it's intimidating. It could be intimidating. It's, kind of, it's personal, right? It's, it's, it's real personal. Look somebody in the eyes. I don't know what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're seeing. I don't know what you're feeling. It's that quick look away. And if you stare too long, it's like, now this is awkward. Yes, because it's like... You, the eyes are like, you know, like you looking into my, you looking into my eyes. Like you, <laughs> why? You got you know? my attention and yeah, I got right, yours. Right, and so he's, he's saying, look, look, look. But I think that there's something here, even in the context of community and vulnerability, mm. that, is, that is captured here. Look at the people that are around you. Yeah. Look at, the, look at the folks that are around you. When's the last time you looked at your wife or your husband in their eyes? When's the last time you looked at your friend in their eyes? When's the last time you looked at your child? in their eyes and just looked at them in their eyes when when's the last time you mm -hmm. beheld the lord and looked at his face mm -hmm. 
But he says to him, look at us. You're not going to treat us like, like, a, like we're just another handout. Because what we have to give you is different. Mm -hmm. I wish that you just realized what you had to give people is different. Mm -hmm. I wish that you just realized that That's what good. you're carrying is different. I just wish that you believed enough in what God put in you to realize that what you're carrying is different and what they need from you is different than what they needed from them. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, make, it doesn't make them better or you better. It's just different. You know what, you carry. You know what you carry. And Peter's saying, even though you've been wanting silver and gold, that's not what I'm giving you. And Peter never said, I don't have that. <laughs> right. Well, he says, silver and gold have I none. So I don't, I don't, but some, actually some theologians say that he's not saying it's not that he doesn't have it. He's saying that that's not what you need. Mm -hmm. Right. The point is Peter's saying, I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> I'm not giving you silver and gold. What I'm, what I'm going to give you in this moment is actually different. It's what you need. And so he says, such as I have, give I to you. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely quoting King James Version. Mm -hmm. I'm like, He's like, where is that at? Right, what verse I five. What I have, uh -huh. I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. You know what I love about this particular part mm. of this whole story mm -hmm. is that they didn't just give him the word. Mm -hmm. They gave him their hand. Mm -hmm. There are so many times that we give people a word or we say we're going to pray for them and we walk away. Mm -hmm. When the Lord wants us to take one more step, give them the word and then reach out our hand and pull them up. Yeah. Give them something tangible to hold on to. Do something for them and don't just leave them there. Mm -hmm. How are we willing to get our hands dirty? Because yeah. if he's laying on the ground, mm -hmm. he's at dirt level. Yeah. He's touching dirt mm -hmm. all day. Mm -hmm. Are we willing to stretch out our hand and get dirty mm -hmm. to help somebody else up? It's so important. And I wonder how many miracles we don't see, not because there wasn't a proclamation of faith, but because we didn't follow all the way through. We see a mm -hmm. pattern of word being released, mm -hmm. faith coming alive in response to the word being released, and then works, corresponding actions with that faith that yield miracles. The word being released. One being sent, the word being released. Faith coming alive as a result of that word being released. And then corresponding actions with the faith that has come alive in that yeah. heart. And then... There is the manifestation of miracles. I'm going to say it one more time. One being sent, there being a releasing of the word, faith coming alive in the heart of the hearers of the word that choose not to just be hearers only, but doers. And then there's corresponding action with the faith that's come alive in their heart. And then you see the manifestation of the miraculous. And that's what we see here. Peter says, Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's the word of the Lord being released to him that stirs faith in him. But there must be what? Corresponding actions. And so Peter goes on to say, I'm committed to your mm -hmm. miracle so much so that I'm going to provoke you to a corresponding action. Yeah. Give me your hand. Let's go. I'm going to pull your hand so that I'm going to help you to rise because you must activate your faith. We grew up at Oral Roberts University in our young years, and and a huge part of all the ministry that Dr. Roberts did was um, activate your faith. In essence, what are you going to do with the faith that's brewing in your heart? Mm -hmm. You heard the word. You've been stirred in faith. Now that you believe and you've got faith to know that God wants to do this for you, what are you going to do? Yeah. Are you going to are you going to get up out of that wheelchair and walk? Are you going to get up off of your lame bed and, and in your own life? Mm -hmm. I want you to hear this right now. And I want faith to stir into your heart because mm -hmm. maybe you've been crippled. Maybe you've been unemployed. In fact, I genuinely see since someone right now that's dealing with heavy financial burden and you're in an a unfavorable employee situation or you are not employed altogether. And you're hearing this word and it's almost it's almost uh, 
like this word has come to you to bring you hope and to bring you water and life in a dry place. And can I tell you, even as you hear me say this, something in you is quickening because you know this is this is the word of the Lord to you. The Holy Spirit wants you to lay hold of this word. And also he's saying, come on and get up. Mm-hmm. Come on and get up off the bed. Yeah. Don't just believe, put corresponding actions to this. And so Peter actually reaches out and says, I'm going to help you with the corresponding actions. I'm going to help. So that may mean that someone delivers you the word of the Lord to you, and then they may actually take you to the unemployment office, or they may take you on a job search, or they may take you on an apartment search, or they may take you to the hospital to, to see that loved one that has been given a bad report. Like, there's going to be help to, to carry out yeah. this corresponding action, right? I love that about Peter. That's a great note. Verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Mm. Sometimes you can be healed, but you're not strong. Mm-hmm. You, sometimes what you've been, you you thought that the weakness in the place that was healed was brokenness, continued brokenness, continued infirmity. But it wasn't that you weren't healed. You just are not strong yet. So he was healed, but what if he stood up? And, his, and, he, and he felt the weakness in his ankles and gave up, mm-hmm. right? It's like you putting in a resume for a job and they say, oh, okay, we'll add it to the power. We got quite a few applicants. Mm-hmm. Doesn't feel like you got a strong chance, right. right? You put your application in for an apartment and you know your credit is kind of, mm, and there's a few other people ahead. Of you. Doesn't feel like you have a strong chance. You put an offer in on a home, and there's some other folks that have offer on the home, and maybe cash on hand. It doesn't feel like you have a strong chance, right? But he leveraged what he had in the midst of it, and and God strengthened his ankles, mm-hmm. right? And he received strength to his ankles. Okay, verse eight. So he leaping up stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God, and all the people who saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. Okay, so now it's testimony time. This, look, look at the, intent, the intention and attention to put this in to the scripture. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Mm-hmm. All included maybe the doctor that told him he'd never walk again. All included maybe the intercessors that had been praying for him to get better. All included maybe the people that had sown coins into his life last week. All the people sitting begging with him. All the people that were sitting and begging with him because this whole area had those folks. And they saw him walking and not just walking, but praising God. God wants to use your life as an example for his glory, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. an example of his goodness for his glory. God wants to use your life as an example of his goodness and for his glory. I want you to hear this again. God wants to use your life as an example of his goodness for his glory. There's an appointed time. So these people are there now. They all see him walking. The scriptures all. Mm -hmm. And he's not just walking, but he's praising God. Yeah. I know some people get upset about people who win these awards and then they, I like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. (laughs) Now, I don't know if he's your Lord. He might be (laughs) your Savior. I don't know. You know, I'm not going to judge nobody in these streets. (laughs) But <laughs> that's my old people voice. <laughs> but what I do want to celebrate is that they're praising God. Yeah. They are acknowledging I couldn't get here I do it on my own. without him. And even in my foolery, I know my grandmama's prayers are keeping me. I know my I know my uncle's mm-hmm. prayers, the prayers of the righteous. I know the prayers of the saints that may not even agree with what I'm doing. Is actually keeping me. God wants to use your life as an example for his glory. It's going to be an example of his goodness for his glory. Yeah. All right. Lastly, it goes on to say, 
What happens when he uses our life as an example for his, of his goodness for his glory? They knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate. So they knew it wasn't just a random guy saying, mm -hmm. I can walk, I can walk. How it looked was, that's, that's Frank. Frank. Who you calling? Johnny. That's Johnny. I called him Frank. We call him Franklin Johnny. Jonathan Franklin. <laughs> Look, that's him. That's the man that was down. It sounds like they are aware that it's him. Mm -hmm. They are some folks that knew the struggle. God's gonna allow them to just be around just long enough and it says to see the breakthrough. He was born this way, mm -hmm. and he sat there daily. Mm -hmm. So they have seen him. Mm -hmm. from the time he was born mm -hmm. in this state, in mm -hmm. this situation. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't like it just happened to him last right. week. Right, He has been this way his whole life. Mm -hmm. They've only known him to be one way. Now, that's what you got to... Mm -hmm. Now, what you really got to check for are the people that have only known you to be one, one way. way. They've only known you to be in need. They've mm -hmm. only known you to need a ride. They've only known you to lend them $50. They've only known you to, to, to need gas money. They've mm -hmm. only known you to need the hookup. Mm -hmm. They've only known you to have and a bill on. they guard you in that place. That's right. But he stood up in a new identity. Mm -hmm. He stood up in a new state of being. And he gave praise to his God. Now, he could have been mad about the years that he couldn't walk. Mm-hmm. Don't waste your time in the new mm -mm. fussing about what didn't happen in the past. Yeah. Don't waste your time in your healing begrudging the years of pain. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. it wasn't easy. And I know yeah. that it was hard. But why waste the time in your healing mourning the years of pain? Mm -hmm. Get up and take off the morning clothes and begin to walk around and praise your God. First place he went was into the temple. I also wonder if he saw some people in there that walk right by him and didn't give him a dime mm -hmm. for years. Huh? But you had the word and you ain't you ain't even give me the word. Forget the money. You, didn't you had the word and you didn't give it to me. But it was a life changing moment. And why was it a life changing moment? Because the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. Wonder and amazement. Your life is going to make people sit in wonder and amazement. Can I tell you that some of you may be wondering why you are where you are. Mm -hmm. In life and in actual locale. Some of you actually wanted to shift places. You actually wanted to be in a different spot. And you wonder why you cannot get that move to the new place you want to be. But for some of you, God has actually allowed you to remain where you are so that he can use your life as an example of his goodness for his glory. It's one thing to see it on the screen. It's one thing to hear it secondhand. It's one thing to hear it thirdhand. But when you know, Johnny, that has been lame for his whole life, and you see yeah. him get up and begin to walk in the newness of life, it does something to your faith. Mm -hmm. And it should. It should. When your brother and sister that you know was struggling, that you knew were hurt, that you knew was stuck in a certain... You ever seen somebody that was so bitter for so long, but then they start to come out of that? Mm. And something in you just, make them, just makes you smile. Mm -hmm. Be like, they seem to really be doing good. Mm -hmm. Seem like they turned a corner. Seem like something shifted. I like this part. I like her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so shady. That other one, child, that other one. I don't know. She needed deliverance years ago. No, but, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, but something in you comes alive yeah. because God has made an example of his goodness for his glory. And my note says, uh, supernaturally healed and began to walk. And when all the people saw this miracle, the door was open for evangelism. What door mm -hmm. would be opened Yep, as a because, result. Yeah, mm -hmm. because of your life changing. In the place and that you you're in. And you giving him glory. And you giving him glory. And even you being in the place that you're in. Right? Sometimes we want to we wanna shift into a new space 
for the come up. Sometimes you don't want to share your new with the people that <laughs> you've been in the old, right? But God, even in that, many times God wants to orchestrate things in such a way, not for, listen, remember, mm -hmm. not for our glory, for his glory. Mm -hmm. God wants to use your life as an example of his goodness for his glory. We're going to wrap here. But this is a power, this is a part of the power and the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Remember, Holy Spirit is not just for revival services, although of course we need him. More Lord, for sure. But also, the Holy Spirit wants to walk with you in your lame places and breathe on them. Cause them to come alive, whether that's a book you're supposed to be writing, whether that's your relationship with your children, what is lame in your life right now? And let the Holy Spirit speak to it in a fresh way. And then take the corresponding steps needed to partner with faith. Get up and walk. And then give God glory and the praise as you walk into your new season. Let's pray for the people. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless you right now you, for your sons and daughters everywhere. Thank you for equals everywhere. And whether they watch this on a Sunday morning or they're watching this midweek, we just pray right now that your Holy Spirit invades their space with a deeper revelation of even what was yes. been taught today. today. We pray that they would be quickened in their inner man to know that the Holy Spirit right now, not in the service, right now, wherever I am, is with me and he actually wants to bring to life good things in my heart that are going to cause me to be an example of his goodness for his glory. We declare this over your life this week as you move forward. God wants to use your life as an example of his goodness for his glory. So let it be manifested in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys so love much. You. Thank you so much for partnering with us. Mm -hmm. It matters yeah. for sure. Every single partner matters. Your, pro your partnership in prayer matters. Your partnership in finances matter. And even as we go into these summer months, ironically, we get more views <laughs> and more interaction in the summer months because many of you are traveling and not in a four-wall context. Right. But also, we, we get the least lesser giving during the month because also many people are traveling and giving. Would you set in your heart, purpose in your heart, Ecos Everywhere. Those yeah. of you that are part of Ecos Everywhere, we already know we're a tithing church. Yes. We tithe. We give a tenth of what we give to the Lord. Right. And then we give offerings above and beyond. Right. Why don't you set in your heart this summer season? Number one, I am not going to become lax on my tithing, mm -hmm. no matter what, because my tithe is unto the Lord. It is his. And I'm going to stay faithful and committed in my offering and giving to the Lord and even maybe go to the next level. All right. We bless you guys. You can give all the ways to give are on your screen. You can give a text to give. If you download our new app, you can give in the app. It's all secure. Uh, you, there's a new text to give number. You can give via Cash App, Venmo. We are tax deductible 501c3 organization. So everything that you give is absolutely tax, de tax deductible. Thank you for partnering with us. All right. We bless you guys. We love you. And we'll see you real soon. Peace.